From the Fox 10 Gulf Stream, this is Next Weather. And welcome to Next Weather. I'm Chief Meteorologist Jason Smith. And I'm meteorologist Nicholas Herboso, and we are tracking the potential for some thunderstorms tomorrow. Some strong, right? Could see strong to severe storms in the morning. And of course, we'll have a team here on Fox 10 News to mm -hmm. keep you posted on these severe weather developments. You'll be with us tomorrow morning on Fox 10 News. We've had less rainfall today. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean for the possibility of storms? Yeah, it's something that we were watching. You know, we were tracking the potential. This is an important forecast for tonight, Friday night, because we were dealing with the parade. Right. And of course, we did not want rain, but as we're talking about and we've been watching the forecast models, we've seen a definite trend drier and that's doing something to the severe weather threat, right? Right, it's adding to the potential instability and you can see that right there with our severe weather outlook. We do have that slight risk of severe weather and Nicholas, this may upgrade to a more substantial risk depending on what the Storm Prediction Center does with this as we go through the overnight hours tonight. Yes, the discussion has already been that the marginal area might get bumped up to slight because in the recent trends, because we've had drier conditions this evening, this Friday evening, this might allow for a more efficient return of moisture, and that means more warm, moist air streaming and providing more instability for thunderstorms. Hence, that's why we've had that slight risk and we could see a little bit more of an expansion there. I want to show you the tornado risk for tomorrow. Right now, it's that 5% risk, that brown area for areas almost east of I-65 and along I-65 there, and that is a possibility. We, we have the potential for some spin-up tornadoes in a squall line that will move through the area. We also have a chance for some strong winds embedded in this squall line. We are going to have winds just aloft in the atmosphere atmosphere around 40 to 50 knots and some of that could mix down to the surface. That'll become possible severe wind. That would be winds of 58 miles per hour or greater. That would trigger severe thunderstorm warnings and that is damaging wind that could cause problems. So tomorrow morning we have that severe wind risk, especially in this yellow area. I want to go through some of the factors in this. We're going to start with dew point. Think of this as a measure of moisture. And watch how the wind streams are pushing this inland, pushing the moisture inland as we go through tomorrow early morning. These are the pre-dawn hours, 3 a.m., a dew point of 63 in Mobile. Well, that will increase to 64, 65. Look at 67 for a dew point in Mobile by 6 a.m. That is very moist air. If you're up early tomorrow, you will notice it. And as the line begins to move through, remember the timing we're talking around 6 a.m. continuing on to the early afternoon. This thing pushes through, but look at the dew points going up to 69 there. That's moist air that can help in the development of this squall line, the strengthening of this squall line before the squall line pushes off to the east. Now let's look at the actual instability forecast. This is the latest run of the HRRR. We're starting at around midnight, and I want to draw your attention to this. This coloring here is where we have instability. That's the pretty much the areas that we could see thunderstorms, and that's the fuel for those thunderstorms. Watch how, much like the dew points rushed in, the instability begins to come in by 5, 6 a.m. The squall line would be located over here, and all this color you see here, that's instability to fuel thunderstorms. Therefore, as this line of thunderstorms pushes through, it will have the ingredients there to become stronger. This squall line would possibly produce some gusty winds and spin up tornadoes because it is getting stronger with the available instability. By 9 a.m., you can kind of see where the squall line is because behind the squall line, instability will drop completely. So that's where the squall line is around 9 a.m. And it still has a more, little bit more fuel to go through before it gets out of here. Remember, it exits around 1 or 2 p.m. Here's the tornado index. We call it the significant tornado parameter. And you can see the legend there. It's on a scale of one to 10. And values around one and two are notable, nothing extreme, but notable. And the recent forecast models have shown an uptrend in these numbers here. In fact, the latest run taking values right around a two here in Greene County, Mississippi. Now that's not an exact science, but it's just to get a general idea that the tornado potential is there within this squall line. A few spin up tornadoes will be possible as this thing exits and notice how the color started to diminish as it moved east. Some of the support in terms of the wind shear, which wind shear would promote the development of tornadoes actually exits our area late. 
So looks like that threat maybe later in the morning might start to go down just a little bit, but that's kind of getting into the weeds of it. The main thing you need to know we have an increasing threat for severe storms, damaging winds and tornadoes are possible. Also some heavy rain with this thing, so you need to stay updated and stay weather aware. Make sure you get that Fox 10 weather app. I want to go very slowly through Futurecast. So you can see the thunderstorms developing. This will be around midnight and then getting to 6 a.m. on Saturday. This is the latest run of this forecast model and notice how slow it is. We had that window around 6 a.m. But this forecast model says it doesn't get here till 8. So a very slow moving line, but then it will start to push and it will race across our area rather efficiently. Here's 9 a.m. Saturday. Here's a line of thunderstorms that you can see and those reds indicating possibly some heavier rain. We'll watch those storms closely. 10 a.m. There it is in the middle of our area. I have to switch forecast models because that's as far as that forecast model would go. Here's 10 a.m. Same area there. So agreement in the forecast models. Then by 11 in our Florida Panhandle counties, Escambia County, Conecuh County, Alabama, and then exiting our area around 1 p.m. And the rest of the day on Saturday, I know we have parades then, looks to be better. So here's a summary of this timing of the squall line. These are very broad numbers just to give you an idea of when you need to plan for storms that'll be moving into your area. Make sure you have multiple ways to receive warnings tomorrow as we have that level two slight risk that has been issued and it is a storm tracker alert day, Jason. Well, with this potential for strong storms tomorrow, we have that storm tracker alert day in effect. So what does that mean? Let's check in with meteorologist Jennifer Lambers. Jennifer. As mentioned, we've declared a storm tracker alert day, but what exactly is that? Well, we're tracking the potential for some strong storms, and so it's going to be important to stay weather aware. But the reason for these storm tracker alert days is to mainly just go ahead and get across the message. Now, it's declared when weather conditions have the potential to be either disruptive, hazardous, or have a notable impact on you, your family, or your plans. Now, the purpose of this is to increase awareness and to help you prepare for active weather. That way, in between all of the rain and the storms we see here on the Gulf Coast, you know which ones are going to have more of an impact on you. So we're not declaring these every single time that we have rain, just whenever we're monitoring for the potential of some of these bigger disruptions. Now, a great way to stay updated with us is to download the Fox 10 weather app. That way you'll be the first to know in case any of these days are issued. Now, in case you don't already have it, you can always just point your camera at the screen there and it'll take you directly to download this app. Now it's great because not only do you get those updated alerts, you have radar, you have Futurecast in the palm of your hand, something most free weather apps don't offer. Plus also we have 60 second forecast updates in case you're in a rush. You can submit photos in case you see damage, hail, or even just a beautiful sunset out there. And also in case you are in an active watch or warning, you can live stream our coverage right in the palm of your hand. So we'll continue to keep you updated on your forecast, keep you updated in case there are any more of these storm tracker alert stays issued. We'll keep you updated again right here on Fox 10. All right, here's our seven day forecast and looking ahead here. We've got that storm tracker alert day Saturday, but after that it's over. We've got some great weather for six days ahead, including most of next week and your extended forecast. Have a great weekend. Just watch out for the storm Saturday. Thanks for joining us here on next weather.